Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Go Royals! Blue Pride is sweeping across the metro as the Royals make their first World Series appearance in 29 years. Mayor Sly James has made several assists across town. Dying Fountains Blue, proclaiming Blue KC Days at a pep rally at the Power and Light District, and reading a book about underdog to the first and third grade classes at Renner Elementary School. While visiting Renner Elementary, the mayor and the kids issued a friendly videotape challenge to San Francisco Mayor Ed Lee. Hey, Mayor Lee, I'm hanging out with a whole bunch of my friends today, and we've been reading Underdog. And the reason we've been reading Underdog is because we know that there's a whole lot of people out there who think the Royals are underdogs in this World Series. Are the Royals underdogs? No! Right on. So, Mayor Lee, we're willing to kind of put our blanket where our mouth is, because Underdog wears a blanket around his neck. <laughs> but here's what we're going to want you to do when the San Francisco Giants lose, okay? In addition to the ice cream that you're sending, which, by the way, disappears in the Underdog book, we also want you to come to Kansas City and meet some of the tremendous kids that we have in our city and read to them just like I did today because we know a couple of things that we always have to do, right? We always have to read to each other, right? Yeah! We have to talk to our brothers and sisters every day, right? Yeah! So Mayor Lee, we're hoping you're going to accept this challenge because if you do, you're going to be able to spend one of the best days that you've had in a long time, hanging out with the kids of Kansas City, doing something that's really cool and reading to them. So we want to make sure that you know who we support. So I'm just going to say this a couple of times. Let's go Royals! 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 Let's go Royals. Yeah! Residents still have a chance to join in the fun by showing off their blue pride on the city's social media accounts. Find a creative way to combine pride in Kansas City, Missouri and the Royals and then show us with a photo or video on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. You could win a cool prize or you may be featured right here on Channel 2. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities. Throughout the year, City Facilities host a variety of exciting and unique events for all interests that add to the Kansas City experience. November is a month with many events to choose from. On Friday, November 7th, all Kansas City Metro Area students from middle school age through college are encouraged to participate in the third annual Sleepless in the City project presented by the Lend a Hand Family Organization. Sleepless in the City is a sleep out created to raise awareness around the issues of youth homelessness in Kansas City. During the sleep out, students will gather at the Convention Center's Barney Alice Plaza and experience homelessness firsthand by spending the night outside for 12 hours. The event will help raise funds for advocacy programs in Kansas City, such as Hope Faith Ministries, whose missions are to help end homelessness. Parents, teachers, community leaders, civic leaders, and city officials are encouraged to take part in the event as well. For information, contact Kalina James at 816-457-7312. Kansas City's most exciting charity boxing event, Guns and Hoses, is coming back to the Kansas City Convention Center Grand Ballroom on November 8th. Police officers, firefighters, and EMT paramedics will square off in the ring to see who will reign victorious. All proceeds benefit the Kansas City Crime Commission's Surviving Spouse and Family Endowment Fund, SAFE, providing financial assistance to the spouses and children of those who make the ultimate sacrifice for our safety. Go to KansasCityGunAndHoses.com for ticketing and event information. The Price is Right, live on stage, comes to the Music Hall on November 15th. The Price is Right Live is the hit interactive stage show that gives eligible individuals the chance to come on down to win for some really great prizes. Play classic games from television's longest running and most popular game shows from Plinko to Cliffhangers to The Big Wheel and even the fabulous 
showcase. Tickets available at Ticketmaster.com or walk up at the Municipal Box Office. For more family fun in November, the Ararat Shriners who have called Kansas City home for 79 years will be returning to the historical Municipal Auditorium November 20th through the 23rd with lions, tigers, elephants, and the circus acts that make this event so exciting and fun for all ages. More than 30,000 residents are expected to attend this year's circus. Tickets are on sale at Ticketmaster.com and you can go to KCShrineCircus.com for additional information. These are just a few of the many events taking place at your Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities. To learn even more, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. Alright, any questions on any of it? I just want whoever is close to the door, somebody, hey, you ran down there, you ran down there. If they ask for a description, not here, but it's a white male, blue jeans, and a black shirt. You got a shotgun, okay? Be scared, I know you're not going to be scared, but be scared, frantic, yelling. As much stimulus as we can give them is, is better, right? Like I said, my actor's going to fire around to begin with, give him a stimulus, and he's going to mingle with the guy. All the way down to your left, you go to I'm Adam Bailey. I am part of the technical response team one uh, out of Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, today I was the active shooter in the scenarios I was running today. Uh, we utilized agencies from Platte County, Clay County, KCPD, security that's out here at the airport uh, to run the scenario and as well as to participate in it. over 80 actors to initiate the scenario along with being able to utilize the whole airport. Uh, we had a very rare situation of being able to use an environment such as this to train officers in a real world situation. We just got one red. We got one right here. We got one right here. Laceration. Uh, today, everybody did an extremely good job, especially working outside agencies that don't typically work together. Uh, as far as what we did today, we would call it a great success for as far as training and being able to serve the people of Kansas City better. My name is Anna Marie Tutera and I'm the Executive Director of the Kansas City Museum, which is now managed by Kansas City Parks and Recreation. And today we are at the museum exploring two exhibitions. One is called Dressing Up in Kansas City, Rites of Passage, and that is an exhibition featuring historic clothing and textiles from our vast collection. We have one of the best 
collections in the region of historic clothing, textiles, and costumes. In addition to that, we'll be taking a look at rituals and celebrations, exploring meaning through dress, and that is a contemporary counterpart to uh, the rites of passage. Hello, I'm Lisa Shockley, the Curator of Collections for the Kansas City Museum, managed by Kansas City Parks and Recreation. We are in our latest exhibit called Dressing Up in Kansas City, Rites of Passage. And this is an exhibit that was created by museum staff with items from our museum's collections and one loaned piece. Our idea in this exhibit is to explore seven different rites of passage or time periods in, in people's lives that most people go through. And we, co we cover birth, we cover growing up, coming of age, marriage, work, death, and then we also have a small selection of special occasions representing um, the American Royal, representing the Jewel Ball, and a couple of other types of special occasions that people purchase dresses for. And our collection is about 100,000 pieces at the Kansas City Museum, and about 20,000 of those are clothing and textiles. So that gave us a real depth of things that we could choose from. And so we're very, very happy to have the opportunity to present these pieces. And we also have in our other gallery at the moment, we have a contemporary exhibit as a complement. Contemporary clothing designers from Kansas City have interpreted some of those same, same events, but in a modern way. Today we are in our new community gallery space that we opened this fall at the Kansas City Museum. And the intent of the community gallery space is to showcase local artists, both emerging and well-established, through exhibitions that we co-curate with the community and that occur at the same time that we are featuring an exhibition that we create as museum staff from our museum collection. So, as you know, we have Rites of Passage that is currently uh, on the second floor of the Kansas City Museum. And as a contemporary counterpart to that, we've created rituals and celebrations exploring meaning through dress. This show features local fashion designers and fiber artists exploring the body uh, being used as a form of artistic expression and exploring the types of garments that are worn for significant transitions in people's lives and significant journeys. One of the reasons that we have both exhibitions showing simultaneously is that we want to create a then and not now dialogue between the exhibitions so that you really get a sense of history being made relevant. Um, it's a way to contemporize our exhibitions that we create using our collection and a way to engage a local community in the museum and build awareness about what we're doing here at the Kansas City Museum. The museum is currently under construction, but it is open. We have a robust schedule of programs and events through the end of December, and we'll continue to do the same through 2015. We are also embarking on a large restoration and rehabilitation project for the museum that will start at some point in 2015. This week, a unique memento went on sale to help area residents show their Kansas City pride, as well as support the upkeep of our fountains. Actual fountain water dyed blue from Kansas City's best known and most photographed fountain, the J.C. Nichols Fountain on the plaza, is being scooped into commemorative bottles to launch the sale of blue fountain water. Residents and tourists may purchase these bottles for five bucks each at the Plaza Customer Service Store, and all proceeds go to the City of Fountains Foundation. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being here. This is really an incredibly fun time uh, and an exciting time for Kansas City at this moment. Uh, we're known as the City of Fountains for good reason, and what better way to show our pride than to turn our fountains blue for the Royals in the World Series and in the playoffs. Eight major Kansas City fountains will flow blue throughout the World Series games. For more information about these stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week and go Royals!